Good to see everybody. We have kind of a, a group of regulars now. It, it, we uh, Every once in a while, some of you have to drop off, but it's nice to see that uh, in general, we have the same the same group every week. That's that's nice. We have Liliana and Heather Rose and Keen and Nobody and Kat and Nathaniel and George and Long Pause Victoria. Jay. Yeah, it's great to see everybody. Um, so today, oh, it looks like we have Cassidy just joined us. That's fantastic. Um, so today, our um, comedian that we're going to be kicking off our lesson and inspiration with is a comedian that's one of my top favorite clowns and performers of all time. I would say in my top five. Um, and uh, I hope that you, I hope you enjoy some of the clips that I show. Um, but this, uh, this person is Carol Burnett. Some of you might have heard of Carol Burnett before. Her, her show um, just recently got put on Amazon Prime, so you can watch her, her show. But uh, Carol Burnett was uh, really influential in breaking ground for women, com women in comedy in general. She had uh, the first show that was led by a woman of that of that kind. She hosted a sketch comedy show, a sketch and variety show on uh, CBS. And at the time, she had done a lot of theater. She was in the the musical um, Once Upon a Mattress in uh, on Broadway. Uh, if you've ever seen that musical, she was the original lead in Once Upon a Mattress, and she had done a lot of other theater stuff. And she started to work in television on a show called The Gary Moore Show, which was a variety and comedy show. And CBS signed a contract with her. Basically, they said, you're really hilarious. We want, we want to do a show with you. Um, we'll sign a contract with you to do whatever show that... Um, whatever show that you want, as soon as your contract is up with the Gary Moore show. And so when her contract was up with the Gary Moore show, she said, uh, I want to do a variety show, a variety and sketch comedy show. And they said, no, no, you can't do that. And she, they said, only, only men can really carry those kinds of shows. And, you know, obviously this was back in the 1960s when uh, mindsets were a lot different and people were a lot more closed-minded about that kind of thing. And she said, no, you, my contract says I can do any kind of show I want. And so she really pushed and was the, the head and the, and the host of that show. And it really broke a lot of ground for women in comedy and women in television. Um, and she's just a, a delightful uh, performer and really, really funny. And it goes along with the, the theme of this week, which is all about environments and things like that, a lot of her comedy comes from her costumes. And I have a little clip that I wanna show you about uh, some of these costumes. I'll show you some, some images first. Um, but a lot of her sketches involve these really elaborate costumes and really interesting pieces and a lot of the comedy would come out of these these costumes and we'll talk a little bit about who made these costumes in one second I don't just wanted to show you some of these so this is her her character uh, the cleaning woman who appeared at the beginning and end of the of the show always and then just to give you an example of some of these elaborate costumes That were, you know, these are like Broadway level costumes that would only get used for one sketch and then go away. Um, you know, instead of being a, a this this high level costume that you use for a, a, the run of a Broadway show, they would use it in one sketch, one week, and then it would be gone. So they spent a lot of money on these um, on these costumes, and the reason why is because they had this fantastic designer named. Bob Mackey, and uh, 
Bob Mackey, uh, if you are familiar with fashion and design, uh, went on to become a huge name in the world of design, but he got his start doing um, doing the costumes for the Carol Burnett show. And so I want to share with you this short little video just to give you an introduction to Bob Mackey and uh, his designs for the Carol Burnett show. One costume in particular is kind of an iconic piece of TV and comedy history. So how many of you are familiar with either the book or the movie of Gone with the Wind? Have you heard of Gone with the Wind before? So the film Gone with the Wind, it's, it's a, a little, it's about the Civil War and it's a, it's a little problematic in 2021. Um, but at the time that it came out, it was uh, hugely, uh, hugely popular and, and broke a lot of ground in terms of its uh, technical aspects and everything. But there's this one scene, it's a scene in the book and it's a scene in the movie where the lead character, it's the Civil War and, and her home has been destroyed. She's lost to all of her money and things like this. And, and she needs a dress. And so she tears down the curtains and she makes a dress out of the, um, out of the curtains and in the in the book and in the movie it's it's a regular dress it's just made out of curtain fabric um well on cbs they were going to do a presentation of gone with the wind um on television and the carol burnett show decided to do a parody of gone with the wind and um so basically the idea was if you don't have four hours to watch all of Gone with the Wind, watch, watch this version and uh, you'll get the gist of it. And so they did this, this comedic parody satire of Gone with the Wind. And when they, they got to the scene with the, where uh, the main character makes the, the dress out of the curtains, uh, there's a, a costume that was, was made pretty iconic by that scene. So first I'll show you the scene and then I'll talk a little bit about what happened. So in the, in the scene previous to what you're going to see, uh, the main character has decided that uh, she's gonna make the dress out of the curtains and rips the curtains down. And then what happens is we get this reveal. All right. Did I turn the Did I turn the sound on that time? Could you hear the sound for that one? Okay. So the so the the gag is, uh, he says it's a beautiful dress, and she says I saw it in the window, and I couldn't resist it. So here you have an instance where the joke is the costume, and that's kind of what is kicking off our theme for today. So the theme for the week is environments, and in you can get a joke out of anything. You can get a joke out of a piece of costuming. You can get a joke out of props. You can get a joke out of set design, all these different things. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Carol Burnett kicks us off with that because Carol Burnett um, got so many great laughs out of, uh, out of the costume designs for the show. And I just wanna share with you this, uh, little thing here. This is Bob Mackey's original design for that dress. Here you can see. So when you make a, a costume design, it's a, a sketch like this with paint that's painted so you know what colors and everything you're going to do. And then that actual that actual dress is was so iconic. It's such a piece of iconic television and comedy history that it is in the Smithsonian Museum here in Washington, D.C. So you th th that actual dress is a is a pretty famous uh, prop and gag from uh, from the Carol Burnett show. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, design and how we can design visual gags like that. Um, but just to 
just to give you a, a little bit more about Carol Burnett, because I want to share um, a little bit about Carol Burnett since she's our inspiration for today. She's a very uh, influential comedian and, and was, was very groundbreaking, especially for women in comedy. And one of the things that Carol Burnett would do on her show is to have this Q&A session, this question and answer session with the audience at the top of it. And she would just improvise all of the jokes and just talk off the top of her head. And so I, I saw this little montage when I was looking for things to put together for, for the, this Carol Burnett intro today. Um, I saw this little montage and I wanted to, to share it with you all just to give you an idea of some of the, the humor from the Carol Burnett show. I thought it was kind of fun. So let me see here, make sure I'm turning on the sound. Okay. All right, so just to give you a little introduction to Carol Burnett, if you like Carol Burnett, do you find any of that interesting or fun? Like I said, her show just recently, um went to amazon prime so if you have amazon prime uh you can you can watch the carol burnett show there and there's again like i said it's super fun carol burnett is one of my favorites of all time so i thought one of the things we could do for a project today our first project is um is to do a little costume design um i know uh some of you have characters that you uh, use on a regular basis or that you like to draw over and over. And so I thought maybe you could, instead of focusing on the character, if you could share a little bit about what the character wears. Um, and if you don't have a character, um, maybe you can think of a character. It can be a character that is a, a, a known character. If you want to draw um, a, a a well-known cartoon character or something like that and then and then pay attention to their costume design or it can be something that you make up uh or it can be um or it can be a, a character from literature or something that's not a cartoon character that uh that you might be able to do a design for so that's uh that's our first project so i wanted to take about five minutes or so to um do a costume design and and uh, and then hopefully all of you would ha will have something to share. Um, we'll do a little costume design. If there's a way that you want to draw a costume design that's kind of fun or interesting or silly, you can do that. So draw a design that's similar to the uh, the curtain dress, the Bob Mackie curtain dress. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that if you if you don't want if you just um, if you just want to show off a, a costume design for your character, that's fine. So we're um, to answer Elite Puppy's question uh, to draw. We're gonna we're just gonna draw a costume design. So costume design should tell us something about the character. It should um, give the audience a, a visual representation of what that character is like. Right. So if you have a character that is, uh, say, a, a tough character, you might want to draw uh, a costume that that showcases them as a tough character. Or if they're a sweet character, you might uh, soften them and have more um, pastel colors and things like that. So think about the character that you're drawing. And how can you how can you visually represent in their costume in their clothes um, something that when the audience sees it they immediately have an, an an instinct about what that character is like. Draw a dapper costume for no reason. That's great. I like a good dapper costume. I'm a big, I'm a big Disneyland fan. I like going to Disneyland. Well, I, I liked going to Disneyland when, when we could go to Disneyland. 
um, and they used to have a day once a year called Dapper Day, where everyone would go and dress in their dapper finest to Disneyland. That's, I can't find my pencil. I can't find my pencil to, to draw along with you all. Oh well, maybe I can doodle it in this, this pen here. Oh, here's my pencil. So again, we're just gonna take about five minutes or so to just do a quick little drawing, a little sketch of a costume design. Think about superhero characters and what their costumes tell you about them. Think about villain characters that you know and, and how they dress. Like if you see a character like Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty, you, you know that's a villain right away. That stark black costume, jagged edges, lots of angles. She has that cowl with the, uh, the horns coming off of it. I mean, immediately that character reads as villain for sure. Um, whereas if you take a character like SpongeBob SquarePants, his, you know, he's got his high water pants, his little tie, um, you know, button down shirt with the short sleeves and, uh, these little shiny shoes. Um, he kind of reads as a little, little bit dweeby. A uh, little bit of a dweeb, SpongeBob is. Um, uh, yes, to answer nobody's question, that's what, that's what we're working on now is a is a drawing, a costume costume design for a character. My design is a is a robot in board shorts. It's a surfing robot. That's the character that I'm coming up with. If anyone wants to share what they're drawing, I know Jay said that he is drawing a dapper costume. I know Tater said that they were going to draw, uh, or they were excited at least to draw a costume design. Laura's is a secret. <laughs> So yeah, you can type in the chat what you're working on if you want to, or if you, uh, if you, if you have something you want to show, you can you can show us a work in progress. We'll take another minute or so, and hopefully somebody will have something to share. All right, Jay's work, Jay's working on coattails, and then we might get we might get someone sharing. So one way uh, that you can have a costume be a gag is like what we saw with the Bob Mackie dress, the, the curtain dress. Another way is when you can juxtapose, um, juxtapose means to put two things together. Um, if 
you if you juxtapose two things that don't usually go together like for example i have uh this drawing of a robot in swim shorts so this is a cool surfing robot you wouldn't normally see a pair of swim shorts on a robot so that's that's a way to turn a costume into a joke or a gag is to put two things together that would normally go together and um, and another way is is to simply make the clothes look funny on the character um, there's um, there's a Daffy Duck cartoon called uh, Chuck Jones, uh, directed by Chuck Jones, called Drip Along Daffy, where Daffy plays a cowboy, and he has just this really ridiculous, silly uh, cowboy costume that doesn't really fit him that well, and it it just looks ridiculous on him. Um, then there's another. This will this will get us into our next thing. Um, there's another costume from a character that I think is uh, really fun. Uh, which we'll, we'll watch this cartoon in a moment. But over here, we have our old pal Wiley Coyote in this bat bat costume. He's going to use to try to capture the Roadrunner. So you can just you can just draw a costume that looks funny on the character. Like I said, um, SpongeBob's costume makes him look kind of nerdy or, or kind of like a little uh, just a little bit just a little bit off. Like you you kind of know that character from um, from the costume. <laughs> Just reading the comments there. Before we move on, does anyone have anything they want to show off? Any costume designs or ideas? Oh, I see Lillian and Heather Rose. Yeah, Squidward has Squid, Squidward has no pants. There's a lot of there's surprisingly a lot of cartoon characters with no pants. Uh, hold on a second, Lillian and Heather Rose. Let me. Pin your video so I can see that a little better. What do we got here? What are we looking at? You want to describe it a little bit? Uh, I just did like a rough sketch of a wedding dress and like some more modern clothes. Very cool wedding dress. Excellent. All right. We have another one in that one on there. Great. What what do we have here? You want to describe it a little bit? Um, it's a set of outfits for some of my characters. Cool. Very good. Excellent. So those those costumes are for the characters that you that you draw regularly. Very good. Is that now, you guys said last week that you, there's a, a project that you're working on together. Is Are those costumes for that project that you mentioned last week? Very cool. Excellent. All right. I see Tater Tot has hand raised. Does that mean you want to share? Yep, but just give me a sec because I have it on another screen and there we go yes is what i got oh very cool that's fantastic can you tell us a little bit about this uh i don't know i just kind of wanted to do the space warrior elf thing i don't know <laughs> i was just kind of like you know what why not let's do well, that I, I tell you what, you have you have achieved it. When when I looked at this, I saw space warrior elf thing. So yay! Uh, so, so this this costume does an excellent job of doing doing its job of giving me giving me an idea of who the character is. Fantastic! That was that was great. I'd like to show. Sure. Who's that, Nathaniel? Mm -hmm. All right, go for it. So 
I should have made. He needs to turn his camera on. My character bigger. Oh, there it is. Wear curl clothes. Don't ask why, but I sort of made it look girly. And with the big hat. That's cool. I like that. That's very fun. It looks like uh, there's an old comedian named Minnie Pearl, uh, who used to be on a show called The Grand Ole Opry. And that, that looks like an outfit that Minnie Pearl would wear. Just an observation. Oh, Jay, I see Jay's hand raised. Hello, I'm um, kind of still working on it, but I drew a shark on the hat for absolutely no reason. A shark on the hat. Yes. Very cool. I had to draw a shark, so I drew a shark on the hat. Excellent. Great, great dapper costume. I see that you you got coattails figured out. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, anybody else before we move on? All right. So the coyote costume and uh, gets us that I showed just a second ago here, brings us to another thing that Coyote is famous for, which is props. You can, you can make uh, a gag out of a costume. You can also make a gag out of props. And I think uh, Wile E. Coyote is probably one of the best at making a great use out of comic props. He's got this automatic skiing machine where he's got this ice box that shoots snow in front of him so he can ski, ski down a place that wouldn't normally have skis. Uh, he has a lot of jet propelled things. There's a jet propelled unicycle, jet propelled pogo stick. Um, he has all kinds of little things that he orders um, from the Acme Corporation, dehydrated boulders. Um, and then here, this is an interesting thing I saw. This is a piece of art. Um, I can't remember the artist's name, but his, his organization is called, uh, his company is called Fringe Focus. And uh, he, he made this piece of art that uh, is every, let's see if I can make this bigger. This is every Acme product that Coyote ever used, Wiley Coyote ever used in, in the cartoon. So it's this one large poster. You can see there's, there's the Batman costume. Uh, the, the snow machine that I just showed is in there. Um, but yeah, this is a cool post, a cool little poster. And then this same same artist made this call uh, this print called "From the Desk of Mr. Coyote," and this is I guess supposed to be Wiley Coyote's workspace. You see all of his different things that he's ordered and all the different schemes that he's he's got laid out. Anyhow, I thought those. Is I thought those. People considered a scheme. What's that? Is a tennis ball considered a scheme? I guess a tennis a tennis ball by itself wouldn't be considered a scheme, but uh, but if you come up with a plan for using a tennis ball for something, that would be a scheme. Um. So I thought it would be fun if we take our inspiration from Coyote and draw um, a fun Acme product, something that Coyote, Wiley Coyote might use to try to catch the Roadrunner. So our second drawing project for the day is to draw an Acme product that the Roadrunner, uh, sorry, that the Wiley Coyote could use to catch the Roadrunner. And uh, Elite Puppy, did you want to share from the costume design or did you want to share uh, something else? All right, yeah, uh, yeah that, let's go ahead and see before, before we move on, let's, uh, let's see Elite Puppy's costume design project. Okay, so this is mine, the official Elite Puppy drawing. 
Fantastic. That looks great. Very colorful. I like it. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So we'll take a few minutes to do this, uh, this prop project. So think on it a little bit um, and just kind of brainstorm and come up with something that the coyote might use to try to capture the Roadrunner. Again, I'll go back here and show you just some inspirations from the poster. We have, uh, we have boomerangs, we have laser guns, we have uh, magnetic pellets, we have a, 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 a giant horseshoe shaped magnet, we have, we have rockets and bombs and dynamite sticks of various kinds, we have uh, lots of rocket powered things, rocket powered roller skates, rocket powered skis, rocket powered, uh, uh, sometimes he would just tie himself to a rocket, um, giant rubber band, the, the catapult, we've seen all of these before. Um, he tried to fly himself through the air with a kite. Over here you can see the rocket powered unicycle that I mentioned before, human cannonball, um, the bat suit, giant trampoline, axle grease, um, exploding bird seed, all these different things. So hopefully this will provide you some inspiration, but the next project is to come up with a prop from the Acme Corporation that the Roadrunner, I just did it again, that the Wiley e. Coyote could use to try to catch the Roadrunner. And this time while we work, I will share a cartoon because I know I haven't done a cartoon in a while. And this is the, for a little bit of inspiration, this is the... Wait! I'd like to share. Oh, wait, Who's, who says why you want to share? Yep, that's right. I already finished. So oh. it's, a, it's a rocket launcher bomb rocket gun. Very cool. It shoots, it's a rocket launcher a, and two bombs, and it it can show you into space. That sounds like it has a lot of potential for Ki for Wiley e. Coyote to mess it up. That's a that's great. Uh, Keen hey. would like to share too. Sure. Go Keen, for it, Keen. on. Was this your costume project? Excellent. You want to you want to tell us a little bit about it? It's Sam. The the character's name is Sam. Sam. It's a cartoon character and video game character. I oh. designed it a bit. Oh yes, yes, yes. I see. Very cool. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Two gaster blasters and bones. Wow. Cool. Uh, well, okay. While everyone continues to work, we haven't watched a cartoon in a while, so I thought I would share a cartoon. This is to give you a little bit of inspiration. This is the cartoon in which the Wiley e. Coyote Batman costume appears. Uh, this is G Wiz. All right. So Laura has something to share. Are we doing prop or costume, Laura? Oh, very cool. Excellent. I love this. Is this for a, a specific character or for or, or just a just a design? Okay, sorry, I had it muted because my um, family's in the room, but that's one of my character's Beatles uh, outfits for one of the things. It's just not fully, like, uh, drawn in the actual character, but yeah. Very cool. I love it. Excellent. Does anyone have an Acme product they want to share? 
Were we all too distracted watching the cartoon? Elite puppy, elite puppy, go for it. Turn the camera on. Oh, Elite Puppy, you don't have your camera on. We can't see. <laughs> Say a backfired ray gun. I'm sure it was fantastic. Anybody else? Anyone else have a Acme product design to share before we? Here's Cat. Cat and Keen, are you raising your hand? Um, hold on. I apologize. It's a little bit loud in my room. Anyway, what I have is I have this. It's like um, an explosive net thing. An explosive net. Very cool. I I can see. Wiley Coyote having trouble with an explosive net or, or that backfiring on him in some way, for sure. That's, that's the most important thing about, uh, about designing an Acme product is thinking, okay, how, how is Wiley Coyote going to mess this up in some way? Or how is, it, how is it going to mess up on him or give him trouble in some way? And, and an exploding net definitely sounds like something that would give Wiley Coyote trouble. Keen, did you have your hand raised? All right. Let's see what you got. Okay, so this is basically a power suit. It has a propeller, uh, jets on the elbows and feet, some uh, control over here, and right here you have missile launchers, and the jet thing thing and these and these holes fire nets and that send a shock through through the person that gets trapped in the net wow that is that there are a lot of things that coyote could mess up on that one for sure it reminds me have uh, have you ever seen uh, the show ducktales the character of gizmo duck it's very yeah. similar similar to that kind of suit yeah, what was that character's name? The robot dude? Uh, his name is Gizmo Duck. Uh, yep. On, on, on DuckTales, yeah. I like, uh, I like nobody's tagline for the Acme product. I think that's a perfect tagline for, for the Acme Corporation. Acme makes high quality failures. All right, anyone else? We're getting close to the end of times. No, not, we're not getting close to the end of time. That would be incredibly scary. Uh, we are getting close to the end of our class time for today. Um, does anyone else have anything they'd like to show off before we start wrapping things up? Well, we didn't get to my, my third element today, which is uh, set design. So we, we talked about how you can make jokes out of costumes. We talked about how you can make uh, jokes out of props. You can also make jokes out of your, your scene uh, as well. It, the, scene, the scene itself can be funny if you juxtapose a character that um, shouldn't be in that, uh, shouldn't be in that scenario. Uh, you, you can make it funny that way. If you look at a, uh, a movie like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, if you've ever seen that, there's the, the town of Toontown and the, the actual setting itself is funny. Um, so there's lots of different things you can do with, uh, with set design and scene design that can, uh, that can provide opportunity for gags as well. Um, and it also reminds me of, um, it also reminds me of the old joke, um, did you hear about the set designer who got fired? He left without making a scene. Uh, I, saw, I saw before this big long O thing, I saw that Jay wanted to share something. So Jay, you can absolutely share. 
Okay, um, so my comic page I'm working on. Very cool. I can you tell me a little bit? I um, with the glare, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing. Oh, this is your comic page. I see. Yes. So they're at the fair, and very cool. One of the characters wants to go on the roller coaster, but the other character is afraid, and she says, "I won't let you fall." This is only my first page, though. Cool. That looks great. Thank you. So some really interesting character designs there. That's fantastic. Um, cool. Uh, Keen, you wanted to share something? Yes, I added the self-destruct button right here, a grab, and this is two grappling hooks. You can't see it, but there's a little slot for shirt cans to fire. I on the side. Excellent. So you, you, you just keep adding to that. That's great. Yep. All right. Well, we are at that time. Uh, we've got to wrap it up for today. Um, so thank you all for your uh, for your sharing, for uh, sharing your creativity with us and sharing your, your drawings. Um, as Scott has just put up in the chat, remember to hit the donate page um, for us. That helps us to keep these classes going for everybody. Um, so check out the donate page and, and, and have your folks check that out if they have not yet. Um, next week we'll be looking, uh, next week will be the last week in our um, series focused on women in comedy and we'll be looking at probably the most famous uh, female comedian of all time, the best, one of the most famous female clowns. Uh, she's definitely on the Mount Rushmore of comedy and uh, and end of comedy television is uh, Lucille Ball. Um, and I think you'll, some, some of you might've seen Lucy stuff before. Um, and uh, I'll have some I'll have some clips again next week, but uh, Lucy uh, is is one of my favorites, and I, and, I, and I definitely look forward to sharing with you some clips uh, of hers. And we'll t look a little bit at putting all this stuff together. So look at how costumes, props, sets, the character the character work we did with um, Whoopi Goldberg, and the storytelling work we did with. Um, Ellen DeGeneres, how we can put all that together into making comic scenes and comic sketches. And uh, we'll use um, Lucille Ball as our guidepost uh, for that one. So I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks for joining us this week. And um, yeah, have a good week. We'll see you next bye. time. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, thanks for all your help, Scott.